All right, all right, Rad Nation. Today we're going to talk about the one thing you can do as a radiologic technologist that can really impact the quality of the exams for your CT patients coming up here at How Radiology Works. So it's pretty annoying when something's miscentered, right? If something's way off to the side like this or down too low like this, these are both cases that are really going to result in a poor viewing quality here. And just like that on your CT scanner, you really want to center the patient well so that you can get the best exam. Luckily, the vendors have made it such that when you acquire the data on your system, you're not fixed to just reconstructing and getting an image that's centered on the scan field of view itself. You could actually go in and make a display field of view, which is different, so that you can actually have a good centered image, but the image quality is what I'm talking about here. And so I want to plead to you as to why you should be centering all your patients, taking care along the way to make sure that they're all centered properly. So if you remember on our CT components video, one of the big parts of the CT scanner is actually what we call the bow tie filter. In very early CT scanners, you even needed a water bag to go around the head to make sure that you could get a very similar fluence on the detector. Nowadays, we don't need the water bag anymore, but we do use this bow tie filter. And the purpose of the bow tie filter is to make it relatively well matched such that if you have a patient, they're usually taking up the middle of that scan field of view and not so much attenuation around the outside of the scan field of view. So we can have more attenuation in our bow tie filter around the outside of the scan field of view, such that we'll get a more similar fluence on the detector. In that case, you would need actually a lower dynamic range on your detector. Attenuating those extra rays also can be good to reduce scatter in your volume as well. So there's many reasons why we like to have that bow tie filter. This is the bow tie filter right here on our system and your patients down here. And again, this is gonna rotate around, right? The whole thing, except for the patient, is gonna be rotating around on the gantry. So I'm gonna show just a couple different views of that. And if you remember the back projection process that we talked about in our image reconstruction, where we took the data and we put it back through the volume, think about doing that for the actual attenuation of the bow tie. So we actually are basically showing you here a map of what the attenuation of the bow tie is like. So there's more built-in attenuation within our imaging volume out towards the outside and less built-in attenuation in the middle. And that's the purpose of it, right? Because we know, like we said, there's more built-in attenuation in our patient that's going to be towards the middle and less towards the outside. What we want to do is actually get a relatively good match for our built-in attenuation plus our patient attenuation. So you can see when we have our patient well-centered, you're going to have a good match for the patient attenuation versus the built-in attenuation. But what actually happens in reality? In reality, at least on average, they're fairly well-positioned in the left-right direction on the table. In addition to the variance, there's also more of a bias in the up-down direction. So more of the time, you can see the patients are usually being positioned too low in the scan field of view, such that they're not gonna be optimally imaged. There's gonna be a relative penalty from the perspective of the dose to noise trade-off in the images. So if your patient's too high, you can see what happens. Again, this is showing you that there's just a mismatch between that built-in attenuation and the attenuation of the patient. And you can see where that mismatch is. So again, we will expect to actually have noisier images out here in the upper portion of the patient here because there's actually the mismatch there. We have more of the built-in filtration plus the patient filtration in that region. Again, if your patient's too low, what you'll see is actually the opposite effect. So again, if the patient's lying on their back, you would expect to see more noise around their spine because there's a mismatch between the built-in attenuation of the bow tie filter 
and the actual patient attenuation. If we look at two different views, again, in the left scenario here, this is what we call the Goldilocks scenario, where it's just right, right? We've got the left-right position's good, the up-down position's good. And if you look at some of the different rays, you can see that we have a relatively good balance because we're going through the bow tie and then the object's relatively well centered. Whereas if you look at this, now that we've moved it down a little bit, if you look at this position here, it's only changing the magnification a little bit. So just like when we talked about temporal motion artifacts, the direction actually matters a lot in this scenario. So from views like this, there's not a big impact, but from views over here, you can see now there is a significant impact because if you look at the bow tie, there's going to be more bow tie attenuation right here. And then also a good amount of patient attenuation. And again, just like we talked about, that means it's going to be noisier at these parts of the image down low because you're too low. Also, the upper part of the image is going to have a higher measured dose because now you're passing through a less attenuating part of the bow tie. So you're going to be measuring a higher dose on the upper part of the image and a lower dose on the lower part of the image, which is going to make it too noisy. So it's basically just a poor trade-off in your dose and noise characteristics. This is joint work by NGH and GE a number of years ago, looking at that effect on the centering. And in this case, it's a centered phantom, and you're looking at subtraction between adjacent images to look at the noise map. So in the case of the centered phantom versus in the case that you're six centimeters too low, and in the case that you're six centimeters too low, it was measured to be 23% more noisy in those lower parts of the image. And then a little bit later, Tim Stikatovich at Madison did similar experiments showing even more extreme differences. In this scenario, the case where you're too high, where you're centered, and where you're too low. And for a region of interest that's around the spine, it's going to be really worse. There was a standard deviation that was double going from the center to the 10 centimeter too low acquisition. So what can you do about this? If you actually look at the lateral scout, you can tell if you're too high or too low based on measurements that you can do in the scout. So now the vendors actually have this as an option on the scanner where there will be a line on the scanner indicating where the center is and where you want it to be. Depending on how the vendor has it implemented, it could say something like go to this given table position and you would go into the system and put that given table position. So if you have the patient relatively well positioned right away, you could get the green check mark that says good job. Or if you do the update and get the patient well positioned, you'll get the green check mark that says good job. You have the patient well positioned in that up down direction. Now you're ready to go with good patient centering. It's also possible on some of the modern systems to have a camera based workflow. So there's a 3D depth camera that's above the table. So you can actually use that to estimate the outline of the patient. So there's two parts to the flow. Based on your prescription, there's a given region of the body that the algorithm is going to be looking at to say, we're actually looking at a chest. So I'm going to be looking at this portion of the image from the camera. And then it's also going to look at the depth from the image from the camera to estimate basically the body contour and then estimate the depth at which that body contour needs to be placed such that it can be well centered within the scan field of view. So those are your two options. Do it from the scout or do it from a new camera-based workflow. Either way, make sure that you're centering your patients. Now that we started talking about the noise in the image, you're really dying to know where does that noise come from, Brian? What causes that noise? What are the factors that affect that noise in my CT image? So check out our video next on the noise in the CT image to see the factors that affect the noise in the CT image. Coming up next.